Good morning and welcome to St. George's Church for this 12th Sunday at the Trinity. We'll be using Common Worship Order 1, the Red Books. I'll be following roughly the, the order of services we did a couple of years ago, but it's all in the Red Book, and I'll try to give the pages for those who might not be familiar with it. We're using uh, the New English Hymnal for our hymns. Uh, I want to let you know that today, for the first time, we're going to be receiving from the chalice those who wish, wish to do so. So if you would like to receive from the chalice, either by intention, by uh, keeping the host in the chalice, or receiving from the cup, just remain at the altar rail, and I will come by a second time with the chalice. Mm -hmm. Our and Lord, and if you don't want it. What's that? And if you don't want it, just leave. Yes, if, if, you, if you prefer not to receive, you can uh, simply uh, uh, leave after having received the host. Uh, our first name is number 149. My wife, Mary Ann, is, is recording the service. She's looking in live on our Facebook page, which she has done before, and also will be posted later on YouTube for those who are unable to attend. In one hundred and forty nine.
Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law.
We will read together Psalm 1, found in the lectionary insert. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the storm. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is true.
thoughts and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We acknowledge in our comment today that God is always more ready to hear, to listen to us, than we're, we are willing to go to him, than we are willing to pray. God wants us to come to him, and he's always ready to give more than we desire or deserve. But often, we're reluctant. Often, we don't bring those things to God for his guidance that we ought to. And we fail to realize what he would pour into our lives if we but do that. Now, I will say personally that again and again, I get troubled about this or that. It could be things to do with work. It could be just general things in the world that we struggle with. And sometimes I get to a point where I don't know where to turn, and then it comes to me that I should have been asking for guidance. It comes to me that I should have begun the day in a different way. And I keep telling people, this is where we need to start. We need to start with prayer and a request for guidance, but I don't do it. And then when I begin to do it, it suddenly becomes easier. I don't know how to explain it other than it's a clear part of God's promises. Come to me, and I will give you what you need. Come to me, and I will guide you through each day. One of my parishioners once gave me a little sheet of paper in honor and said, This is God. I'm here to help you. No, I don't need your help. God can do it without our help, but he does desire, desire our communication, desire our relationship. And of course, as we speak of prayer, prayer is so much more than just throwing up requests to God. It's about taking some time in that to listen and seek his guidance and be able to make the choice that are placed before us. Now, today's lessons, we have choices. We have choices set before us. And it's very clear that our relationship with God is such that God does not force us to do things. He does not force us to obey Him. There are consequences often when we don't, but we are not compelled to do anything. If God wanted to do that, he could compel us to do it. But he doesn't. He wants us to shift the focus. He wants us to turn our hearts to him and let him work in us. And let us receive the fullness of what he offers. In today's first lesson in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, of course, the the Israelites are ready to cross into the promised land. Ready to receive the promises that have been delayed. Why? Because of their hardness of heart. Because of their unwillingness to accept what God was doing. Because of their constant complaining. The result being that they didn't get there for 40 years. So the complainers and the disobedient didn't get to come up. It was a new generation. And Moses in this lesson is, is giving them farewell instructions, preparing them to go into this new land. And the critical part of this is that he places before them choices. You can obey God. You can do the things that he has told you to do, that you might enter into this land and flourish or you can do otherwise and face those consequences. And the admonition is, choose life. Choose life that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and holding fast to Him. For that means life to you and length of days. He calls on us to choose life. And life, of course, 
it is clearly understood he is living in the pattern that he has laid out for us. Receiving all those good things that he desires to give us even if we don't deserve it. But we have a choice. And while we make the choice, I think, at various times to follow him, each new day ought to cause us to refresh him, to make again that choice, to choose life in God's love. In the second lesson, we have another case of choice. I didn't think it was real. Anyway, we have a second choice. In this particular circumstance, Onesimus, a slave, has escaped. And he has become a Christian and he has been with Paul. And he is now returning to the Master. And this whole letter is about an entreaty from Paul to receive Onesimus back. To receive him back, not as the slave he once was, but rather as a brother. Because Onesimus is now a Christian, so he calls him to receive him in that light and to develop a new relationship. But of course, very clearly, in the context of this lesson, it's a choice. Paul is entreating him to do this. But it remains the choice of Philemon as to whether or not he's going to have this different relationship or go back in a punitive way in dealing with an Onesimus, the escaped slave. Again, a choice. A choice with entreaties, and of course we get these entreaties as well from God, but it's a choice. And then, of course, in today's gospel, Jesus places before us the ultimate choice. The choice of following him. Do we want to follow him? Or do we want to continue as we were? To continue in the old ways. Now the gospel tells us that large crowds were following him. Remember in many of these stories the crowds were so large he never had time to rest. He had to go and try to hide to get a break, but then when the crowds were closing again, he would come back. He would come back because he had compassion. But in today's gospel, he's trying to lay out what the reality is of following him. Now, when we read through this, we might say that someone might take it aside and say, you know, maybe you're not going down the best road here to attract people. I remember reading a story once of, of a preacher who went to one of these mega churches. You have all these mega churches at home. Big box churches, they call them. They're like big box stores. And they have all sorts of entertainment, instruments, screens for everything, you name it. And people pack in. There's a Starbucks coffee place in the back. You can take your coffee in. And a, and a man in a a preacher, a minister, his wife went to one of those, and he said, oh, I, I couldn't fill this place. I couldn't fill a place like this. She said, but you could empty it. <laughs> you could empty it. Because the people there, and I, I'm not judging them, but often it has the nature of something entertaining, you know, rock music, you name it. And, and, and often it's not about making the hard choices. In fact, we have one television preacher who says, all you got to do is come and riches will be poured your way. You want a new refrigerator? You want a, or there's one song, Lord, would you buy me a Mercedes Benz? You know, well, of course, it's made very clear by Jesus that that's not going to happen. That's not the pattern. And so Jesus lays it out very clearly here. First of all, he attacks the things that we put before him. Now, I think we have to take much of this as hyper hyperbole because we know that Jesus does not desire that we hate other people. That's not, that's not the ministry of peace and love that Jesus came to deliver to us. 
But he does say these words, whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, sometimes brothers are easier to hate. You know, we might want to get into that. But, but if you don't do that, if you don't even hate life itself, you can't be his disciple. Now what he's saying there is you have to have priorities. And your first priority as a disciple of Jesus is to follow him wherever that leads. Wherever. And then he says, count the cost. If you want to follow me, count the cost. Plan. Realize that it's going to be costly in one way or the other. In relationships, in your standing in the world, in pride, people might even look at you and say, I think you're strange. Because you have chosen a different way of life. You have made this choice. He says, which of you intending to build a tower doesn't plan for it? And lay a foundation. Otherwise, they're going to make fun of you because you didn't even count the cost. Or a king going to war has to calculate whether he's able to win. And if he doesn't have enough strength, he needs to sue for peace. But perhaps the most cutting language in here is the language about the cross. Now we do know that even mentioning the cross had to be awkward for those who were following. They did not have that in mind. And of course it's very clear when you look at the actions of the disciples. They did not have in mind what was going to happen to Jesus. Because he tried to tell them about that and they tried to shut him up. Peter told him, no, no, this could never happen. They tried to shut him up because he mentioned the cross. And for us, it doesn't have the same kind of context that people then could see. The painful suffering and death. The suffocation hanging on the cross. The instrument of Roman power used against the people. In, in the area and against all the subject peoples. Making an example of them. But God, of course, made that example into something different. But Jesus' call is to be willing to go there. To take up your cross and follow. And then the final. The final verse here is, Therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. That kind of flies in the face of the Mercedes Benz argument. Or other things. But again, Jesus says elsewhere in the gospel, God knows you need these things. The key is, where do you put them? Have you chosen them above all things? Or have you chosen God's way and moved in that direction? So the call to us is first of all, to be ready to receive from God. And to be willing to choose the way that he has laid it before us. And to be willing, as in the case of Philemon, to take instruction and encouragement that we might be moved toward making right decisions. And finally, finally, to commit all of ourselves following Jesus, wherever that takes us. And in every event, it's not a question of giving up all these things, it's a question of what priorities we establish. Again, I submit, as in the prayer context, if the priority is God, things go smooth. If the priority is something else, ourselves or others, or something that would distract us, then the path is more difficult. And it remains for us to choose. To choose life. To choose the love of God. To choose the example of Jesus. And to go in that direction, always knowing that He is leading.
We continue on page 7 with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen in our history. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten by him, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and unconscious silence. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and had seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to just and the kingdom will have Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the world. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come and Amen. The response to our prayers of intercession to the words, Lord, hear us, is Lord, graciously hear us. <laughs> in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised to your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Robert and David, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Blessed God, Elizabeth, our Queen, Sergio, the President of Italy, Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, hear us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those whom we may name. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. George and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Bring us all to your heavenly city, to the joyful gathering of thousands of angels, to the assembly of your firstborn, to the spirits of the saints made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that promises peace. Merciful Father, as it is the best for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace to all of you here. I suppose we're not at the point of uh, going and hugging one another yet, but hopefully that will come sometime soon. Peace and uh, Welcome to our guests. Uh, 
Good to have you visiting with us. Uh, would remind everyone as we receive the offering that St. George's is self-supporting, so we rely on the gifts of our members and those who visit us to keep this ministry in operation. Uh, and Susan's looking for a plate there. I don't think anyone brought it up, but I will get it. So <laughs> I, would, I would ask those of you who are able uh, to give as generously as possible to help us to keep this ministry uh, a witness in this community and to those who visit a lot. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Very Our hymn that we offer for you is number 353. Barbara's not feeling well, and, and we're calling Carmelo to come and get her. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, say a prayer for Barbara. Father, we give you your many blessings and your mercy. We pray for Barbara and we pray for healing for her for whatever it is uh, is troubling her. We pray for the Holy Spirit is working in her life that she will go home safely and recover in this day. We pray for Carmelo as he travels to pick her up. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
will become for us the bread of life. Blessed is he, God, forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed is he, God, forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. His life is the last and last. Father, we give you thanks and praise to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you, a holy people. And now we give you thanks, because by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us in him a new people, to show forth your glory. Therefore, with angels, archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, 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 Lord, God Thy kingdom come, 
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, keep and preserve us to everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, keep and preserve you to everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, keep and preserve you.
but, mm -hmm. but we do need to know as quickly as possible uh, those who are going to go. And then the amendment. And uh, let's see, did you give a date in your statement or just kind of? Uh, for when they should look at it. Oh, we have to, do we have to let you know? Yeah. Okay. So that would be coming up pretty quickly. So those who are able to and be able to come. Yes. I believe so, but I, I don't have the schedule. No, that's No. Well, on behalf of the law, we'd like to work with you on the other side. Oh, thank you. It's lovely to have you back. It's lovely. Well, we feel like we're coming home. We've been away for a while, but we're now back home. <laughs> and I'd like to reassure you for Barbara had um, an, now how do you say it in English? Uh, her blood sugar level dropped drastically, and she's not been feeling well for a couple of days. So. I just wanted to say thank you all for your prayers when I had my knee surgery. It is greatly appreciated. And, and Sylvia, the nurse, has had wonderful comments to help me along the way. So thank you all for that. And thank you for our guests attending today. Uh, these guests are from Nazareth. Yeah. So I said we we're going to be mentioning Galilee, and, uh, and they are members of the Anglican Church uh, in Nazareth. So welcome. And these two uh, young ladies are from London. Of oh, course. <laughs> She's Sicilian. She's Sicilian. She's Sicilian origin, okay. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, north, uh, oh, by Norwich is Walsingham, that's England. So there is no there as well. But for some of us, London is, is comparable. <laughs> Well, we, we do have a concluding hymn, number 427. And I do want to say that, you know, sometimes at home I, I try to pick hymns that I have memorized because sometimes at home when I quit singing, everyone was singing, but it was great on that last hymn you always carried back in that word about it. Yeah. <laughs>
and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you all. Go in the peace of Christ. And in my name, Lord. This concludes our service.